I'm Berserkules, the Berserk Herb. And today's show is a TV show from the 1950s that only has one episode. So you know it's gotta be good. Its name, Johnny Jupiter. So the show is about a guy named Ernest P. Whirl, or a Duckweather, who makes a TV capable of contacting Jupiter, and makes first contact with its people. With a TV. Um, are TVs radios? What? Anyway, he makes first contact with the inhabitants of Jupiter, who are, um, um, definitely not puppets behind a wall with a hole in it. Nope, these are aliens. Creeping comets, what a disappointment. Coolest special effects ever! Hi, Chuck. See, how's it going in that other dimension? It's great! That's great to hear! How'd you do in a new dimension? Can't complain. This is totally legit! So the show starts as we see the puppets, or I mean, the technologically advanced, sophisticated aliens, on a TV monitor. Um, selling us M&Ms? Huh. Starting the show off with an ad? What the fuck? That's very mercenary. Ha! Huh. I'm Berserkeries, the Berserk Herc. Buy my shit! Now on to my review. So the show really starts as Ernest P. Duckweather and his female friend Kathy sit around in a store. I've just been thinking about you and me, Kathy. Oh? What about you and me? Well, we've known each other for such a long time. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if one day you and me were... <laughs> this is going to sound silly to you, Kathy. Oh, no, not at all. One day you and me were walking down the aisle of... Yes? Go on. The first rocket ship to outer space. Wah, wah. But at least they're both thinking about riding rockets. <laughs> but why the fuck is he fantasizing about walking down an aisle on the first rocket ship to outer space? What the fuck? Why not sitting in a seat in the first rocket ship to outer space? Or standing in a closet in the first rocket ship to outer space? Or sitting on the toilet in the first rocket ship to outer space? Why the fuck would you want to be walking down an aisle in a spaceship? That makes no sense! Then again, her wanting to walk down the aisle with him also makes no sense. They'll be perfect together! So as they chat, they realize they're missing their favorite radio show and rush to listen to it. Is it a good thing to advertise listening to the radio on a TV show? Anyway. So they listen to the radio show, hosted by a guy called Professor Spiegelmacher, who talks about money not being everything and how people should enjoy their life even if they don't have money. Their radio listening is then interrupted. I hate it when people interrupt the show! So their radio listening is interrupted by the girl's father, who is also Ernest's boss. Um, dating the boss's daughter, eh, Ernest? Good luck with that. Perhaps Ernest will tell me how listening to a radio program will bring money into this store. But that's just the point, Dad. According to Professor Spiegelmacher, well, you don't need money to be happy. Um, I think this show is mistaking needing money to be happy and needing money to survive in a society that uses money. So as the show goes on, the store owner ends up trying to compete for the attention of some old lady against some other guy. The lady needs a guest speaker for a high school lecture, and the guys drop names of people they know that can fill the role. The store owner then inadvertently drops Professor Spiegelmacher's name, and the lady loves that idea, and the store owner acts as if he knows the professor and agrees to get him to give the lecture. And, though they've collected money to pay for a speaker, they decided they don't want to pay Professor Spiegelmacher, because he thinks money isn't everything. What the fuck? So they expect the man who promotes being happy with no money to be happy with not getting paid? Um, money isn't everything. Most people care about their friends or their family. But that doesn't mean they'll work for free. What the fuck? <sighs> Fucking dumb kids TV show from the 50s. So later, as the store owner is alone, he calls over Ernest and then, um, whispers his plan into his ear. That's not creepy. And since you can't hear what he's saying, I'll say what he probably said. I need you to find Professor Spiegelmacher and get him to give a lecture at the local high school. Aw, oh, shit. Did I just wreck the whole episode for you now? And why is he whispering in his ear? I mean, there's no one else in the room. It's not like they're going to be overheard by anyone. Does he just really want to be close to Ernest or something? What the fuck? I need you, 
Ernest, bend me over this counter and fuck me in the ass. So Ernest P. Duckweather then goes about contacting his alien friends. Um, why does he work stocking shelves in some small town convenience store if he can invent a radio that can contact Jupiter and establish contact with an alien race? Jeepers! This guy's dumber than Ernest P. Whirl. And are they padding out this show by having him turn on his TV radio? What the fuck? Anyway, he tells the puppets, or aliens, about his predicament, and they help him by locating the professor with their telescope. From Jupiter. That's one good telescope. And there he is, Mr. Duckworthy. He just walked into the park. Which park? Can you tell? I don't know the name of it, but there's a great big statue right in the middle. Um... Where's the statue? I just see the professor sitting on a bench. Can aliens perceive invisible things? Or is the film magical? Or am I losing my mind? Or is this a poorly made kids show? Oh, probably the latter. And, um, it's kind of creepy that they can watch us on Earth like that. Do they also watch girls in the shower? Or do they watch me in the shower? Now I'm worried. You better not be watching me, you fucked up puppet! So Ernest goes and meets up with the professor and asks him to do a guest lecture, and he agrees. They then head back to the store and meet up with the others. And as the father and daughter go on ahead, Ernest and the professor stay behind to sort out the slides the professor will use. The professor then asks about his pay, and when he realizes they want him to work for free, he refuses to do the lecture, and then Ernest tries to sell us some M&Ms. Wait, what? That's a snakey ad, just jumping in the middle of my berserk her product. A show like that? Crazy M&Ms ad. So, with the professor unwilling to do the lecture, Ernest decides to dress up like him and do the lecture himself, and consults his highly advanced alien friends. I just thought of something. I gotta have somebody help me with these slides here. Oh, what do you mean? Well, somebody's gotta put on the slides while I do the talking. That's what I was gonna do for uh, the professor. And that sounds like a job for a robot. Which robot did you have in mind? <laughs> Not you, Major Domo. I was talking about Reject. Reject? They have a robot called Reject? What the fuck? Why is he called Reject? That sounds mean! Jeepers! If you're gonna call him a mean name, why not just call him Unwanted Pile of Garbage? Or Useless Piece of Shit? Reject, the factory rejected robot. Wait, what? If he's a factory rejected robot, why use him for the task? That's just fucking stupid! At least this show is consistent. So as the highly evolved alien life form goes and gets reject, Ernest puts on his fake beard. Um, where do you get those clothes from? Where the fake beard? Is a real professor running around naked and shaved somewhere? What the fuck? So as he puts on his beard, we see that the guy that is in battle with the store owner over the attention of the ugly old lady sees Ernest changing and realizes a scheme is afoot. Ernest then heads off to the lecture, as we see that Kathy is sent back to see what is taking Ernest and the professor so long. And then Johnny Jupiter... Wait, his name is Johnny Jupiter? And he's from Jupiter? Is that how names are supposed to work? Am I Berserkules Earth? What the fuck? I'm glad we don't live on Uranus. So Johnny Jupiter then prepares Reject to go to Earth. And then he sends him to the high school lecture... Holy shit! So the puppets are supposed to be human-sized? What the fuck? That's a whole new level of creepy! Anyway, so the fake Spiegelmacher then goes and speaks to the lecture, and... Ladies and gentlemen, once again we prove that money isn't everything. Um, the audience is talking through his speech? That's rude! Some people have no respect for other people's work. So he goes on with his lecture, and of course Reject uses the wrong slides. Wow, didn't see that coming. And, um, where did he get the wrong slides from? There was only four slides for him to use. Is Reject so incapable and incompetent that he can make reality fuck up? Holy shit! Anyway, Reject uses the incorrect slides, and this causes the audience, that we never see, to laugh like hyenas. Or at least laugh like canned laughter. I wish I had canned laughter. I guess I do now. What? 
That was a funny line. So was that. Donkey. I so rule. This is not getting old. So as Kathy gets back to the store, we see her meet up with the real professor as... How do you like that? Somebody stole my clothes? Wait, he did take your clothes? Holy fuck! I was just joking when I said that. Wait, you're still wearing your clothes. Well, you just have one hell of a fancy birthday suit. So Kathy then finds out about what happened, and shames the professor into doing the lecture, and then they head off to the high school as Ernest, the fake professor, continues his half-assed speech, and Reject continues to fail to use the correct slides, and the audience continues to laugh in hysterics. Seriously, a picture of the front of a building gets big laughs, how is that funny? Here's another picture of a building front. Is it funny too? Should I stop reviewing TV shows and start reviewing building fronts? This building gives off the impression of strength, all while remaining casual. What the fuck am I saying? <laughs> Holy cow! A no smoking sign? I now understand humor. Thank you, kids' TV show from the 50s. Thank you. I did not know comedy till this moment. So then the other guy decides to stop the canned laughter by starting to point out the fake professor. And I say he starts to point out because, well, he takes a long time to get to the point. So long, in fact, that the real professor has time to arrive with Kathy, get the attention of Ernest, and then for them to make a switch. All while the guy continues to build up to the big reveal of the fake. He then pulls on the real professor's real beard, thinking it's a fake beard, and the audience laughs as hard as they did for the no smoking sign. The guy runs off embarrassed, and Ernest and Kathy have a good laugh, and then another ad. Yep, end on a high note. So that's it. It's now the end. And by end, I mean another ad. Hi, I'm Berserkules, the Berserk Herc. Do you like buying stuff? Do you like spending money on stuff you don't need? Good. Then I have a product for you. Hey, are you always running out of Berserk? All out of Herc? Well, don't worry. We have your solution. Try Berserk Herc product. That's right. Buy it now and have less money later. It's great. It's fantastic. But don't take my word for it. Here's some testimonials of some people we paid to say... Oh, wait, um... People we didn't pay to say they liked it. We can edit that part out, right? Berserk Herc products are great. I bought some, and now I have less money. I bought Berserk Herc products, and I now own more possessions than before. Thanks for the cash. I bought Berserk Herc products, and now I'm better off. This product is so great. Everyone should have it. I'm not getting paid to say I love Berserk Herc products. Hearing someone say they like something triggers a response from you, because thousands of years of evolution have taught people to trust each other for the betterment of our species. Now I'm exploiting that and telling you to buy Berserk Herc products. Here's more testimonials. This stuff is great. Would I lie to you? Oh, by the way, I'm a trustworthy person. I use this product all the time. It's great. I, um, what is this stuff anyway? Berserk Herc products are lame. I mean, cool. I use them all the time. I don't hang out with people who don't own at least three Berserk Herc products. I'm the coolest person I know, because I have Berserk Herc products. I'm Berserk Elise, the Berserk Herc. So of course I'm going to say I like my product. Because it's great. So now I know you're thinking, how do I get this stuff? Well, you call us at our expensive 900 number and order it direct. So call us at 19,000 fake number. That's right, 19,000 fake number. So call it now and buy this shit. Or, I mean, product. Operators are standing by for your call. Well, actually sitting, but anyway. And for this limited time, i.e., whenever you see this ad, order now and receive a free pair of pants. Side effects may include finding dumb shit funny, loss of hair, loss of bowel control, spontaneous and instant death, and gaining tons and tons of weight. This product is not recommended for anyone. How could you not want to own Preserve Earth products? Are you a fucking idiot?